Welcome to My Long Island TV. From Manhasset to Montauk, we have traveled our communities to bring you the following events. I'm your host, Waldo Cabrera. My Long Island TV starts now. Today we're at Brookhaven National Laboratory and we're celebrating our last Summer Sundays event of the season. We're really excited because as our physicists say, we save the best for last. And that's the Relativistic Heavy Ion Collider. And we say Rick for short. You'll be able to visit two of the experiments, the Star and the Phoenix, our machinery and equipment that we have, and the science that we do. Rick is the Relativistic Heavy Ion Collider. That first word, relativistic, means things traveling at close to the speed of light. Heavy ions are the bare nuclei of elements where we've, through acceleration, stages of accelerating and stripping, we've removed all the electrons from the ions. And then collider means we collide them together. Part of our program is the relativistic heavy ions that I was just talking about, but we also collide protons where we control the polarization of the protons. We try to understand the structure of the proton and how the proton gets its spin, which is still a mystery. And we are the world's only polarized proton collider. It turns out the smaller the thing you want to study, the bigger the machine you need to study it. And so it's a very expensive undertaking, not only in the equipment that we use, but there are a thousand physicists and engineers from around the world involved in the experiments. There's another 500 in the collider accelerator department that make the accelerator work and improve it. And so all of us are supported primarily by taxpayer dollars. So I hope people go away thinking that their taxpayer dollars are well spent. When I got into this uh, physics, basically, it was coming out and seeing a facility like this that really got me inspired to, to pursue this uh, topic. And so I want to share that with the people. So one thing is just to have them come out and have a look at the amazing uh, facility that we have and the detector that's built. It's really overwhelming the size. And so we'll try to explain to them how it works, the physics behind what, uh, what comes out, and why we actually do the experiment so that they get an idea of what we're learning. The Relativistic Heavy Ion Collider allows us to create a, a matter which is as hot and as dense as the universe was at one microsecond after the Big Bang. And so that really means that we can rewind the clock to just after the Big Bang and see what the universe was like at that time. The Rick ring is actually a two and a half mile circumference ring, which is about the same size as the Indianapolis 500 racetrack. And this is the place where particles are actually sent to circulate at 99.995% of the speed of light. To go back to the Indy 500 uh, comparison, cars do like one lap a minute and the particles that are in the ring for us do 80,000 laps a second. So in order to accelerate the particles to 99.995% of the speed of light, we need to be able to make them have the trajectory bend into a circular motion. In order to do so, we have to power our magnets to superconducting temperatures, which is 4.2 Kelvin, which essentially with the quality of the vacuum we have into the beam pipes, that makes the rake ring one of the coldest points in the universe. In order to cool down the magnets to 4.2 Kelvin, we have to use 30 tons of helium, liquid helium per year. This corresponds to about a couple hundred years of Macy's parades, if you would have. That's enough gas to fill those balloons for all those years. You're looking at a, a, a very large nuclear physics detector. Uh, in this case, it's a, a device that's capable of seeing subatomic particles uh, that come out of collisions of nuclei. Well, we take pictures with that camera at a rate of about a thousand times per second. The data then uh, goes through processing. A lot of people are familiar with their, their computers these days having hard drives that are maybe tens or hundreds of gigabytes, even up to a thousand times a gigabyte called a terabyte. In the course of one year, we'll take a thousand of what you call terabytes, uh, and the word for that is petabytes. We have petabytes of data each year. Back in the 1800s and 1900s, people were studying electricity and magnetism, and they were learning about electrons and eventually learning about the nucleus. 
And so from electricity and magnetism, we learned how to communicate with each other via you know, radio waves in the atmosphere. And we learned about electronics and how to build all of these fantastic devices, which changed our world. Now, basically, we're studying the nucleus. We're going one level deeper. And we're just sort of scratching on the surface of that. So some of the things that we discover in nuclear physics go on to help us do things like magnetic resonance imaging and different uh, cancer treatments. And so we're kind of on the forefront of understanding uh, nature at that level, which we hope that you know in 20, 30, 40 years from now will really revolutionize and improve the way that all of us live, the same way that studying electricity and magnetism did at that time.